Hello. Part two of moving from insecure to secure. Now, if you can hear the noise in the background, I do apologize. They're doing some kind of, I don't know, work on the floor above me. But, oh, if you haven't seen part one already, I will link it somewhere here or in the description. But for part two, my advice to you is to learn how to be emotionally available for yourself. A lot of times when we're feeling insecure, we're looking for emotional safety in someone else when really we need to cultivate emotional safety within ourselves. How do we do that? Compassion and acceptance. A lot of times in this society, we aren't really taught how to hold forgiveness and acceptance for who we are because we live in a society that perpetuates perfectionism. And we spend our whole entire lives trying to be enough for everyone else but ourselves, for our partner, for our job, for our business, for our parents, whoever else you want to fill in the blank with, okay? So since we're constantly seeking external validation that we learn probably in public school, to say the least, we don't really learn how to validate ourselves. So what does that look like? It's all fun and games when, you know, when you wake up and you're already feeling fine and you're like, wow, I love myself today. Today, I'm amazing. Today, I'm great. I'm a literal goddess. I'm the prize. X, Y, Z, right? When the real work kicks in is when you're feeling like shit, when you're not feeling all happy and roses, when you're feeling not good about yourself. Is it hard for you to still say, I love you, or I'm sorry, I love myself, I care about myself, I accept me, I'm wonderful? Probably not. And if you're like any other human on the planet, you might find that you have a little bit of resistance to those phrases. And then you start to pile on things of like, who am I kidding? I don't really mean this. That means that I don't love myself. I'm just faking the funk. I'm not enough. I'll never be enough. And then we fall into that cycle. It might seem like I'm going on a tangent, but if you think about it, and I'm going to wrap it all nice for you in a little gift, all of that contributes to insecurity in our relationship. Because how many of you, if you're in a relationship now, or even if you've ever been in a relationship, there's always really good days where it feels like you're in a flow, you're in sync, like you're not really being triggered. You're not having terrible thoughts about what your partner's doing, or if they love you, or if they're going to cheat on you. And then you have those bad days and those bad days where it feels like you're ruminating. You can't get control of your thoughts. You don't understand because you were doing so good the other day. And now today you're right back at the bottom and it's frustrating. And it, again, in part one, we talked about shame, but that is a that is a very big window for shame to come in. When you learn to be emotionally present and, and not trying to immediately fix what you're feeling or fix, or let me rephrase that thinking that you should be reacting a certain way when you're already experiencing a certain type of reaction, that is what it looks like to emotionally abandon yourself. So you want to create emotional safety within yourself by practicing, damn, I don't feel good right now. And it feels like I'm moving backwards and I'm, I'm feeling jealous. I'm feeling insecure, right? And once you say all of that to yourself, even if you don't mean it, you say, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. And it's not going to feel normal at first. It's not going to be, it's not going to feel natural, but you're building that muscle. Like the analogy that I like to think of is I'm sure all of you at one point have seen those videos of those poor little dogs that are abused. And when someone comes in and tries to help them, that dog is like, F you, I don't trust you. They're like barking, they're, they're screaming. They, they don't trust the help at all. But over time, these people that really care for these dogs, they continue to put in the work to build emotional safety and trust with that animal. And then over time, slowly but surely, that dog realizes, wait a minute, I'm safe here. And that is what you're doing with the part of you that doesn't feel safe, that doesn't feel seen, that 
doesn't feel heard because of however long it's been, however old you are, every time it felt something that was saying, hey, I'm not safe, you and I were basically like, well, that's too damn bad. You need to get it together. You see what I'm saying? Okay, now you might say, well, Sage, I have been trying to do that for the longest time and it's still not working. My answer to you would be, well, think about when you were a baby or even as a toddler, right? You're new to the world. You don't know anything. You don't understand anything. You have this complete trust in everything and it, it, it's beautiful innocence, right? When you think of yourself at that age, is there anything that that toddler or that baby could do that would suddenly make it not worthy or deserving of unconditional love? Is there anything that baby could do to make it not worthy and deserving of being heard unconditionally? Your answer is probably no. And if it's yes, then that's a different topic that we can talk about. But let's just say you said no. Now, I want you to think at what point did that worthiness and deservingness change? Was it magically when you hit six years old? Did something happen, right? And if you can pinpoint like when that change was, think about what really happened. And then I want you to think about like, if you were someone witnessing that thing, would you still judge it the same? Like, okay, let me rephrase this another way. Let's say it's not even you, right? Let's take you out of the equation. Let's say you're looking at somebody else's kid. Would you still judge that kid as not worthy and deserving of unconditional love and being heard? And if the answer is no, then I want you to marinate that. Why is it all of a sudden you are the only person in existence that is not worthy of unconditional love? and being heard is like is that a thing like are you literally the only person in the world not worthy of it that did wonders for me when i thought about it that way shout out to cbt um but yeah these are the things that you're going to have to think about a little bit more and if you need a little more help if you want me to make more content on that i'm more than happy to do so just leave a comment below but these are the kinds this is self-love this is the process of shadow work and it's not always easy and a lot of times it'll take time and just because it might make sense immediately in your head it can take your body months years to catch up depending on how long it's been adjusted to something and whatever the intensity of whatever event made it feel a certain type of way Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope that you got what you needed and I just want to remind you that you got this and hopefully we'll see each other again. And if you would like to do some tapping, stick with me. We're about to do it now. I'm going to put this mic down and the audio will change a little bit probably, but that's just because I can't properly tap with this mic. So let's get into it. All right, before we get into it, I want you to like bounce your shoulders shake your arms because i'm feeling really tense and i just noticed that so if i'm feeling tense i bet you feel intense so we're just even if you can stand up or something just shake your body clench your shoulders up to the top and then let them drop unclench your jaw soften your neck let's do that shoulder clench again hold it and then drop there we go that's already so much better okay Today we're going to be talking, we're going to be tapping on being present with yourself. Emotionally, spiritually, mentally. And you'll notice that we'll talk through the negative first. And that's important because we need to move the energy. You can't just slap positivity on top of the negative because the negative will still be there and then we're doing all these affirmations wondering why it's not working you know the rest so ah, you can just follow along with me with where i tap and what i say we're gonna start on the side of the hand today hmm. even though hold up guys i need to say a prayer 
spirit, let, let me be a vessel for healing and for expansion today for all who watch this video. Spirit that loves us unconditionally and has our highest good in mind always, I call upon our spirit teams to release what needs to be released and shift what needs to be shifted. Thank you for what I get to do. Even though, I'm sorry, repeat, <laughs> repeat after me. Even though I never learned to be there for myself. I don't know what showing up for myself really looks like. All I know is trying to be perfect. And even though that's my experience, that's all I've known. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Maybe not completely. But maybe just a little bit. Or a lot. Depending on what I'm feeling today. Alright. Going up the eyebrow. I don't know how to really love and accept myself. I don't know how to love and accept myself. I'm always hard on myself. I don't know how to show myself compassion. Hell, I don't even think I deserve it. Why would I show myself compassion? Why would I show myself love and acceptance? That kind of stuff just isn't meant for me. I mean, I see it for other people. I hear it exists. But it's not for me. Every single person in the world gets to have it. Except for me. I'm not meant to have it. I don't deserve it. I haven't earned it. deserving of unconditional love. When will I be worthy and deserving of being heard? Why do I have to earn it in the first place? I don't know, maybe I just learned it from somewhere. my caretakers. Maybe I just learned it from my peers or my environment. But that's just the way it is. That's just the way life is. Does it have to be that way? Is that really my lot in life? I have to earn love and acceptance? Is that what it was like when I was a baby? Did I have to earn love and acceptance as a baby? Or was I just inherently deserving of it? When I would cry, 
when I was unwell as a baby? Did I have to earn people taking care of me? I mean, if someone doesn't take care of a baby, what kind of person are they? So when did that change? Why all of a sudden, as an adult, I am not inherently worthy or deserving of love and being heard? doesn't really make sense, does it? I mean, yeah, I could probably come up with some reason. But when I think about it, when I really think about it, a part of me thinks it doesn't sound right at all. And that is not right. When I look at other people, they're worthy and deserving of unconditional love and acceptance. So why not me? I think I'm going to open up to changing that idea now. Maybe just a little bit. Because I don't like the way that feels, feeling unworthy and unlovable. I don't like the way it feels having to earn love. I know a part of me knows that I was born inherently worthy and valuable. Love is something that's meant for everyone. And so I'm going to take a portion of mine today, my portion of love. And I'm not going to let anyone take that from me. I didn't have to earn this love. I didn't have to control anything for this love. This is my love just for me being me. And maybe tomorrow I can take a little more love. Because deep down I know I am worthy and deserving of it. And I'm letting that sink into every cell in my body. That I am unconditionally worthy and deserving of unconditional love. in and out how was that my friend I had to yawn in the middle of that but I didn't let myself because you know I wanted to keep the flow but if you yawned if you felt any kind of like like the, I don't want to call it bubble guts anyway yeah if you, if you had to fire or anything like that that's all good signs of a positive shift so I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. If you're enjoying these, let me know. If you can live without them, let me know as well. But either way, thank you for being here and hopefully I will see you again.